My name is Holly Jackson, and I am going to give a little overview of our circulating recreation kits at the Portland District Library. Uh, this is something that we started several years ago in 2014 and have had great success with at our library. We currently have 23 circulating recreation kits. So these are different sports, different outdoor activities, and we have several in cataloging that will be going out soon. We have seven bicycles for community checkout. And then we have a volleyball net, a parachute, obstacle course, um, jump ropes, hula hoops, all sorts of different activity things that we pull out periodically for pop-up programs when we notice that we have a lot of people just hanging around the library. For this presentation, I'll focus just on our circulating kits. But if you have any questions about any of our other programs, I love sharing about it and you're welcome to email me. These kits and our bicycles, we got through a grant that we filled out, the Curiosity Creates Grant through the ALSC. And when we started, we had an idea of what we wanted to do. We already do something called our Take It, Make It kits, which are the same idea, but they are hobby kits. So we've got a Raspberry Pi board, and we've got cookie making, and we've got things like that that people can start a new hobby and see if they're interested, crocheting, et cetera. So then we wanted to take that idea and we wanted to make it into something that people could use to be active in our community. We have a lot of parks near us. Our library is located in the middle of the neighborhood, but we also are in an area that's uh, right near or under the poverty level. And so not a lot of the kids have the funds in their home to be able to get a football or to be able to go out and buy uh, these sports things or these recreational things that they want to try. So what we did first is we, once we got this grant, we sat down and we picked five popular sports in our area that we knew people would want to use, and we curated kits around those sports. So we chose football, basketball, soccer, volleyball, and frisbee golf, um, which, if you have never played, is an interesting little sport that is very popular in our area. Each kit that we put together has the main equipment needed for the sport, so it might contain the soccer ball or the frisbee golf discs or the volleyball, but it might not have secondary things. So for the football, we don't include a helmet or a jersey. Uh, for basketball, we're including basketball, but obviously we're not including the court or the hoop. So kids have the main thing they need to do that activity. And then we include some books or information sheets because we're a library. So it might have a book about how to play the sport, soccer for dummies, or um, the technicalities of frisbee golf. Or we might include local information sheets about that activity. So for our frisbee golf, we have maps of where all the frisbee golf courses are. For some of our other kits, we have information sheets on the rules of that activity or variations on the activity so that we're making sure not only do we give them the materials to physically do this activity, but we're giving them enough information that they can do it themselves, start a group, have fun, and enjoy it without just standing there and holding a basketball. All of our kits use them at the library on our green space at any time without checking them out. So like I said, we started our Frisbee golf kit, which is disc golf, and this will show you kind of what's in every kit. Every kit is the same plastic uh, kit that we can zip tie shut, except for some of our bigger kits we keep in big canvas bags. Everyone has a sign on it and tells what the kit is, as well as the items in the kit on the back so that people know what they're getting. We have all of those items included. So as you can see for the disc golf, we have the discs, we have a couple books, and we have the maps of the local area. This kit was actually so popular that we ended up purchasing another one, and we've had to do that with a couple of our kits because they were constantly checked out. Um, our bocce ball is another one that is always off the shelf. Each kit... Um, when they take it home, we cut off the zip tie, but when it's in the library, it is zip tied shut so that we can make sure that none of those items are getting taken out prematurely so that we, when the kit is checked out, they get all of the items they need and can just go and do. For our kickoff activity, when we first brought these kits out, it was a new concept. No one in our area had done anything like this really. Um, in fact, in our area, we have a small rec center, but we don't really have any other teen spaces or kids spaces. We don't have a YMCA or a Boys and Girls Club, anything like that. So it was our library is the area where all of the kids run to hang out and spend their free time. So we find ourselves doing a lot of activities. And we wanted the kids to know that this was a new activity, that they could come and check out a kickball kit or a basketball kit. 
And so we did a huge kickoff activity where we pulled out all of our recreation kits and the supplies that we've curated. And we planned a day long event where we had all of these kits available to play with. We gave the kids snacks. We gave away different activity things that they could take home and do by themselves. So jump rope, tacky sacks. Um, we gave away some hula hoops. We did some running challenges. We rented a bounce house. We had some tournaments just to keep the kids involved all day to see how much fun they could have when they were outside and they were being active. At this activity, because we knew we wanted to do more kits in our collection, we wanted to have lots of options for kids to be active in our community, we collected some ideas. We have learned over the years that though we have great ideas, they're not always ideas that everyone else loves. So we try to get as much feedback from our community as possible. And we did this at this activity. We said, hey, we have a volleyball kit. What do you want us to get? And that's how we got things like our bocce ball kit, which is super popular. We had never thought of that one until someone came up and said, you know, I have a group that plays bocce, and it would be great to have another set for when we have too many people. In our kits as well, we put a little information sheet that allowed people to fill out what kits they would want. So they may say, yes, I really like this kit, and rate the kit and what they liked about it. And then they say, hey, I have an idea. Let's get a kickball kit. And they turn those sheets in when they bring the item back. And so we have consistently grown our collection from those ideas, and everything checks out. Some of our current kits you can see listed. Uh, we started with our five. We have multiple of multiple of these kits. So several of them have two or more of the same exact kit because they're so popular. We have things like our obstacle course, which is often checked out for birthday parties or school field days. We have ring toss, which is taken to, we've, we've had businesses check this out, to take to different like street fairs and festivals where they have a booth so that they have something for the kids to do. We have a lot of sports kits, and we also have a workout kit. We have people that were constantly requesting workout DVDs, and that's not something that we can necessarily have in our collection all of the time. And so we thought it would be a good idea to try a kit that they could check out so they could check it out, and they could have it for four weeks and see if they really like this workout and want to buy it, or if there's problems with it, or they could learn the routines, etc. So that one has also been very popular. Some of our successes with these kits, uh, these kits led to another avenue for us to partner with community schools, which is something we had not anticipated. But after about our first year and a half of having them, we put them out in the fall, which may have not been the best idea. Well, late summer, we put all of our kits out. And here in Idaho, it gets really cold in the winter. Not a lot of people are outdoors playing sports. So our kits didn't really take off until the next summer. But after a, a year and a half or so, we had teachers coming who were wanting to check out our kits for back to school activities and then that spring field day activities for their kids. So they would come and say, hey, can we take your parachute? Can we take the obstacle course? Uh, and so this gives a connection that we really got to talk with some of the local schools and the local teachers a lot more than we had been because they were hearing through the grapevine that we had these kits that they could check out and take and use for their classroom at recess or at a field day for uh, incentives for their kids to do whatever they needed to to do. These kids also give us options for affordable programming. So we do programs every single day. And every day, we and many days, we have multiple programs, which keep us busy at our library. Because as I stated before, we are really kind of a community center. And this gave us an option for something that we have already paid for that we can pull out and we can do a kickball tournament. Or we can set up the volleyball net and do volleyball with the adults, things like that, so that we have program ideas that are not costing us a lot of money when we're doing something every single day. So we utilize these kits during the summer a lot. It also helps with the perception that we're a fun library. Kids are wanting to come for these kits. They're coming because they're saying, hey, I can go play volleyball. But then they're here and they're looking at the books or they're you know, participating in another science program. So it's, it's another way for us to get people in the door. We also got our community moving. Like I said, we have a long winter season, and often sports aren't really played outside. We can play indoor sports such as basketball and volleyball, but outdoor sports really aren't played from October until March or April because we have a lot of snow on the ground and freezing weather. Um, that being said, these kits, which check out for a month, check out 12 to 15 times a year still. So they're checking out more than once a month all year round, and a lot of that is during our spring and summer months. It's hard to find a kit on the shelf during those months, and honestly, if we want to do a program with something, we usually have to put a hold on that item so that we can eventually get it back for our program because it's always being checked out. Uh, we also get feedback from people about how much they like sports they never thought they would. So personally, I tried bocce ball, which I had never heard of, and I actually really love bocce ball. I never would have tried that if the library hadn't had a kit that we pulled out one day. We've had other people say, oh, I never knew how much I liked volleyball because I didn't play in school, or I've tried badminton now, and I like that a lot. 
and other things, table tennis, real tennis. Um, we're looking at getting some racquetball rackets so that people can have this opportunity to try all these sports that they might not try otherwise because there's no commitment, there's no team, it's not a competition. They can just come and check out the kid at the library and be really active. Some of the lessons that we learned, uh, always keep a bike pump on hand. So if you're going to do anything with sports balls or bikes, you will want a bike pump on hand because at the least opportune moment, someone will come in with a flat soccer ball and a flat volleyball and you have a program in 15 minutes and need that bike pump. It's also become really handy because we have a lot of kids ride their bike and often they'll get flat tires or they just need a little more air in their tire, things like that. And so we have that on hand for the kids to use as well while they're here so they're not stranded with a flat tire on their bike. One thing that we didn't consider as much with the sports kits is replacement parts. We have had these hobby kits that I mentioned, and some of them are very expensive. We have $300 robotics kits. We have some that are $150, $200. Many of them cost upwards of $100 that we're putting out there, and we haven't really had to replace anything. We had our dot, Dash and Dot kit, which is our $300 robotics kit, and we just replaced a part for that last month, and it's been out on the shelf for four years. However, our sports kits that are getting a lot more use out of them are getting a lot more wear and tear and we had to replace a lot more parts than we anticipated. So make sure when you're buying sets, a ladder golf set, you're looking and seeing, hey, can I buy replacement parts or am I willing to buy a new $60 set next time this part breaks? Also, you want to make sure there's an interest in the kits you're purchasing. Like I said, we found that we may have ideas that we love, but our community doesn't love them. And so getting feedback in these kits, we, we still put some kits out that we thought, oh, this will be great, and they don't check out as much. Now, they still check out, but they're not as popular, and they would have been more popular had we gotten that feedback from the community and gotten kits that they really wanted, such as our bocce ball, our frisbee golf, our volleyball, which have multiple kits that check out. That is really all I have for this short presentation of our circulating kits, but if you have any questions, you are always welcome to email me or give me a phone call. Or check out our Facebook or our Instagram, and we often put our activities up on there, pictures of what's going on, so you can get some ideas from that as well. And that is all.